All right, we're live. Hello, everyone. We are back again for one more chance to review the YWCA Women's Triathlon Training Plan. I'm Rachel Weikert. I am the race director for the YWCA Minneapolis Women's Triathlon, presented by Boston Scientific. We are so close to race day. I hope everyone out there has had a fantastic summer so far with lots of bike rides and swims and training rides and runs. Uh, we are three weeks away from the try and just about to begin block three. So these are your final weeks of three weeks of training leading up to the triathlon. Uh, you've worked super hard and you are so close to reaping the rewards. Uh, we are about to head into this last, uh, this third week is your peak week of training. So that means it is the hardest week of the entire training plan. In our plan, the peak week is also race specific. So you are going to start off with a brick on Tuesday, followed by a longer swim on Wednesday and a long run on Thursday. After resting on Friday, you are gonna have two days of more intense workouts on Saturday and Sunday. There's a bike ride on Saturday and we suggest going for at least 70 minutes or even 90 minutes uh, and pushing yourself during that time to really go at that race pace that you're hoping to hit during the triathlon. On Sunday, there are several brick repeats and this should also be a pretty challenging workout. You'll notice that you'll do a bike run repeat for three very short periods. Uh, these are a great opportunity for you to practice that bike to run transition or the T2 transition um, and to get the feeling for what, it's, what your legs are gonna feel like going from that bike to the run and to also really practice those shorts, short bursts of speed. Remember, we talked in the last time that as you do those that bike to run transition, your legs feel like jello. You realize you have no idea what gravity feels like. It's an entirely new experience. It feels really weird. Again, everybody feels this way, and this is not. This is a chance for you to practice that feeling, get used to it, so it doesn't throw you off on race day. Don't take it too seriously. Now, the peak week is gonna be followed by a taper, which can be a little tricky to manage both mentally and physically. The taper is the time when you slowly back off the intensity and duration of the workout so that your body can recover in time for the race. Mentally, you might feel like you're being slow or lazy, but trust us, you need this time and your body needs this time to rest and recover so that you can physically go into race day at your peak condition. We suggest starting that taper in week two. Uh, if you are confused or following another training plan, a really good general guideline for a taper is to gradually back off from your 100% effort to maybe about 75% effort in, and for us, we say doing that about two weeks before the race, and then going down to about 50% effort right before that race. And for our training plan, that is the week before the race where you go down to 50%. So for example, in week two of our training plan, each of the workouts prescribed for the week are a little shorter and a little less intense. Keep in mind that if you're doing weight training or other cross training or conditioning, you will also wanna back off the intensity on these workouts as well. This taper period is not the time where you're out there to set your PR for squat or to set a record for going to Zumba every single day. Uh, this is your time to pull back and focus a little bit more on just giving your time, your body time to recover and focus on the technique for your swim, bike, and run. The workouts the week before the race are going to be short and much less intense so that your body is still active but not overworked. Again, giving yourself that time to recover. Focusing on your mental game at this point is also hugely beneficial. The tapering, like I said, it can be really hard mentally. Um, you might also think that you've only got two weeks left to train, so you've got to squeeze in those last few workouts. Trust me, that's not going to help you in the long run. Your body is as trained as it's going to be, so you need to give yourself that time to pull back, rest, recover, and focus on your mental game for the race. Embrace the training that you've done so far and really focus on what's ahead of you. That week before the race is a really good time to more, uh, spend more time to focus on the logistics. So make sure that your bike is tuned up and safe. 
uh, know how to change a tire if you don't already. We have still, we still have a couple to uh, change clinics. And at this point, you also want to start to make sure to look at those course maps and know the expo schedule and the race day schedule. Walking through all of these things mentally uh, will be a really, really good idea so that you know what you're going to walk into on race weekend. If you need any last minute uh, gear or nutrition items, now is also a really good time to head to our partners at REI, Endurance House, Gear West, and VeloFix and pick up the last of your nutrition, hydration, or gear needs. Finally, you might want to start thinking about, you know, what does your pack list look like? And what does your schedule for the race weekend look like? What time are you going to go to pack it, pick up? And what time will you go to bed on Saturday night? What time will you wake up on Sunday morning? And what time are you leaving to get to the race site? As a reminder, that transition area opens at 5.45 a.m. and closes at 7.45 a.m. So you want to make sure to give yourself enough time to get there, get your things in place, and still relax before the race actually starts. So go through your race checklist, create your race day schedule and your weekend schedule so that you have everything pretty well prepared mentally before you go into that kind of higher anxiety weekend. And if you still don't know what to pack or what the schedule looks like, we have those items in our training guide. Page 22 has our pack list that we recommend following. So finally, on a personal level, at this point in my training during that week before the race, I really like to think about my race strategy, um, especially if I'm really nervous about a particular portion of the race. So for example, if I'm worried about that swim and you think, man, I just don't know if, how I'm gonna make it through the entire swim, I will write down just exactly how many strokes I plan to take before I need to take up, get up and take a breath or when I need to sight, and that's gonna be my swim plan. Well, I'll even write down in that plan when I plan to stop and take a rest on a buoy if I need it. I'm also gonna take time to write out my nutrition plan so I have a good idea of when I'm gonna take in calories and how many calories throughout the entire ride. If I don't follow that plan exactly, it's not a big deal, but I like knowing that I've thought about it ahead of time and I have a good idea of how many calories I'm taking in and whether it's through hydration and a sports drink or whether it's through some other nutrition like sports, gels, clip bars, chomps, whatever it might be. Uh, sometimes in my, in my planning, I'll actually write out the mantra that I want to tell myself while I'm biking or running, whatever helps to get me through that phase of it. So sometimes it's just keep moving, one foot in front of the other, left, right, left, right, whatever works for you, but it helps to have that in the back of your pocket. So I've got a few questions from the audience uh, now that we've kind of gone through all of the last few weeks of training and what that looks like. So I'll answer these. And please remember, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box here with the Facebook Live session, or you can always reach out to us on social media or email us at triathlon at ywcampls.org, and we will get back to you. So one of the questions we had was around what to wear, especially if you have a larger chest and need a little bit more support. And if you generally wear one or two sports bras while you're running, but not while you're swimming. Well, there is no nudity in the transition area. So we would recommend if you're going to wear two sports bras or even a sports bra under a swimsuit, wear those before you get to the race site. We don't want you to change or potentially expose yourself while you're in the transition area. Plus, it's kind of hard to take off clothing or put anything on when you're wet or the clothing is wet. So plan to wear your base layer that you're going to wear for the entirety of the race. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that the transition area is open at 5.45 a.m., closes at 7.45 a.m. Only volunteers and athletes are allowed in that transition area. So you may ask another athlete or your friend, if they are an athlete, there to help you set up your transition area or ask a volunteer if you need a little bit of help figuring out where your items should go. You may also bring in a balloon or a brightly colored towel or use some chalk on the ground to mark out your spot on the transition rack. That's all fine and we encourage it as long as whatever you put up does not interfere with anyone else's rack space. Everyone in the transition area needs to have safe and easy access to their equipment for the entirety of the race. 
The transition area uh, will remain closed at seven, uh, from 7.45 a.m. until we have clarity on when that last runner is going to come through the transition, uh, through that finish line. So we do that out of respect for all of our athletes. No one wants to come in through the finish line to an empty field and everybody's gone home. So we try to keep that transition area secure for the entirety of the race so that folks are sticking around again so that every athlete gets that wonderful experience of coming into a really cheering and loud and supportive and amazing crowd. So take advantage of that opportunity and be really supportive of those athletes that are coming in uh, if they are coming in after you. That's all I have for questions at this point. So my advice to you now is to trust in yourself and believe in your training and just have fun. The YWCA Women's Try is one of the best triathlon experiences out there and uh, you, are, you are gonna be surrounded by fellow athletes, spectators, and volunteers who are just as excited as you are about the race. So enjoy the rest of your training and have an awesome triathlon.